Here comes CJ Claus, here comes CJ Claus, right down CJ Claus Lane. Merry Christmas, buddy. I never get to open the show. You never get to open these shows. That was really great. That was a good voice. I thought I was waiting for you to finish the song. Yeah, I, I haven't, you know, I didn't have time to jig up all the lyrics. I've been kind of busy here opening presents, hanging out with my family. No. So, uh, it's a little tease. Nice festive start, though, to a great time of year. Yeah, I'm really grateful for this time of year. I'm grateful for you and, and the rest of the SDPN crew and the fans, obviously. But uh, getting to spend time uh, for Christmas, uh, just being around friends and family, nothing better, man. And just, you know, really grateful. But I do need you to do something for me, if that's okay. Because I know we're doing this episode. It's Christmas-themed. We're going to be festive. You could hear the jingle bells. I would like for you to do like one sort of serious hockey thing for me. Is that okay? what? After, here, There's not thing. even gotta, games I, going on right now. What's there to talk I, I, about? I, I understand. I understand. There's other Christmas stuff I want to get to on today's episode. But I would love it if you would use your generosity, CJ Claus, to gift one gift to each Canadian team across the NHL. You, you might as well do it. You're wearing the hat. You have the beard. I'm sure you still got some some gifts left in the goodie bag. Why not do it? Right down CJ Claus Lane. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I have to. Okay, if I have right. to. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. Literally, and literally the gifts you can give these Canadian teams, it could be anything you want. It so do be, you know, does Santa yeah. fly east to west? When giving out the gifts, or is it west to east? Because hmm. well, we should do north... it. We should do it in sequential order. If I'm going from place to place, that actually is something that came to mind. But to your point, I wondered if going from west to east or east to west makes sense. Since weather goes from west to east, why not go west to east? See, I was thinking it was going to be east to west. Would you rather east to west? Well, it's not about my preference for gifts. I'm just trying to follow Santa's flight track. Oh, man. Uh, we should have gotten producer Nick to give us an active. <laughs> we need like, a what ruling was the route on this. plan this year. What was, the route, what was the route plan? We need the active route plan. Uh, okay. Uh, producer Nick, Nick, Nick says Nick, east to west. He's, he's made the judgment call. We're going east to west here. So let's start from east to west. So let's start with the Montreal Canadiens then. Oh, I thought we could start in Quebec City and we could say a team. Oh, <laughs> no, CJ. <laughs> That's so, not nice. I know. I'd love to see. Them I mean, they team. would love a team there. Yes. Yes. And I would, too. I wish I could grant them one, gift them one. <laughs> I mean, I would I would love it more than anything else for, for that community and, and that city. And obviously just the renewal of a Quebec rivalry. But uh, in due time, uh, Quebec City fans, let's start with the Montreal Canadiens. That'll be Santa 2024 hits Quebec City. Yes. Um, the Montreal Canadiens. It's been a bit of a tough year in Montreal. They get to be expected. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what I would grant them is a place for them to send one of their goaltenders. Because okay. I, I would grant them a suitor offering them something that they would take back in return so that they could ease the, the three headed goalie monster that has been in their crease. Cause I don't think this was necessarily the plan. I mean, the plan of course is to protect their assets. There was concern at the start of the year, about losing Caden Primo potentially on waivers. And so he wasn't able to go through waivers and play in Laval for them in the American hockey league. They've since extended Samuel Montembeau. So I assume he's part of the plans, but I, I would grant them a suitable trade offer for one of Jake Allen or Caden Primo. Cause I do think after a certain amount of time, and we're now more than two months into the season, it's a long time to be carrying three goalies. There's only two nets on the ice, even at practice. So it's hard to get everyone the reps they need. And so I, I think that that's, it's an off the, it's, it's, it, this might be not the best gift Santa's ever come up with, but that's what I'm giving the Canadians this year. I'm interested in the fact that you've included Caden Primo in this, because I would have thought that Jake Allen might be the obvious person to have a change of address. Why lump in Caden Primo? Well, I think that they're open to doing either, right? I mean, Jake Allen's probably, I would say, the more likely to move because he's a more proven entity, uh, played a lot of games in the league, 
And, you know, naturally, if we're looking at teams that are looking to to strengthen their their position in, in that, they probably feel a little more comfortable bringing him in in the short term um, in terms of being able to play big games. So, you know, he's got a he's got a no trade clause, eight teams, I believe, on his limited no trade clause. So that could could come up the works. But uh, I think I think either either goaltender, they'd be open to moving if, if the package they got back was was deemed to be suitable. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll cross off the Munchak Canadians. They got their gift already. Let's move on to the Ottawa Senators. I this is a this is a big gift. Like it's hard to fit this in the sleigh. But I want to give the Ottawa Senators a legit playoff race in March and early. That's April. a massive gift to put in that in their stocking. It's it's a lot to put in there. It's 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 you need the stocking, you need the whole tree area. You might need a, a secondary room in the house to get it all in there. But I'd like to see them play meaningful home games down the stretch with a chance to make the playoffs. And and you know, one thing that's dogged them early in the year, Julian, they they've played fewer games than most of the league. And so I know they've they've dug a big hole. It doesn't look good right now, but if they have a very successful January and February you know, I think it's something that they've wanted for a long time there. Obviously they want to make the playoffs. I can't, they have to do that for themselves. Santa can't just hand them a playoff spot, but I'd like to, I'd like to hand them the opportunity to play those games late in the year that matter most. I think their, their fans deserve it. I think their players that have been there for a long time deserve it. And frankly, yeah, that that team just, it's, it's been a hard lock time. I think brighter days are ahead. Maybe didn't come as easily as was hoped when Mike Landlauer took over ownership of the team in September. Um, but I'd like to to give them the gift of meaningful March and April hockey. Okay. All right. I like that. Let's go to the Toronto Maple Leafs. What are you gifting the Toronto Maple Leafs? What do you get for the the team that has everything? What do you get for your friend that has everything, right? Um, I think the Toronto Maple Leafs, <clears throat> Santa's feeling very generous. CJ Claus is feeling very generous here. Uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, I'm going to give them a defensive pairing. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not just giving them pair. one defenseman. So two. Santa is coming up with a ready-made pairing to drop right onto the Leafs blue line. Look, they, they've they've really hung in well here in this stretch leading up to Christmas time, uh, really through November when they, they got the injury bug in a major way. Um, and credit to their depth defenseman, the Simon Buenois, <clears throat> Max Lejoie, William Lagason, you know, these guys have, have filled in pretty capably, but I think for the Leafs to become anywhere near the kind of team they they endeavor to become, it's going to take not just one defenseman, but two additions to this roster. And Santa's, again, feeling very generous. So lots of room in the sleigh this year to, to deliver two ready-made left shot and a right shot defenseman to the Leafs roster. Bonus gift. Uh, Steve Dangle, what does he get? A lump of coal. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 oh man. Steve's been bad this year. Have you been watching Damn. the LFRs? He's been he, he's he's got to control his emotions a little bit better. This year? More than any other year? <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, actually, you know what? Actually, no. You know what? This year he's actually been pretty bad. This this is a different Steve than un- ever he's unhinged. Unhinged. He's, he's unhinged. So he's gonna get some coal, which I'm sure will anger him f- further. But I hope it give, it allows him time to reflect in this holiday season. So once again, twenty twenty four is just around the corner here. We can all we can all endeavor to be better. Steve asks for trades and once again denied a lump <laughs> of coal in your stocking instead. <laughs> okay, we've done Montreal, we've done Ottawa, we've done Toronto. Uh, let's move on to the Winnipeg Jets. You know, Winnipeg has been a great story in the early going of the season. They really, uh, I think I, I was actually, if you go right back to the first episode, I was saying that I thought they were a playoff team. So I expected them to be good, but they've probably been a little more competitive even than I was forecasting at the start of the year. What I would like to gift the Winnipeg Jets is 2000 more people to buy tickets to each game. Damn. Okay. Because, <laughs> damn, <laughs> because to this part of the season, Straight to the attendance issue. Okay. <laughs> well, Jesus. I'm trying to give no, you me. what you really want, what you really need, right? The Leafs need a defenseman. Ottawa needs competitive games. 
Montreal Winnipeg needs, needs fans in the seats. <laughs> well, <laughs> they deserve. I look it. I'm being serious here, though. Okay. There's a lot of hardworking people in that organization. Yes. They've built a better team than people thought, or they've more competitive team. You know, Rick Bonus has really, I think, gelled them together. I just think yeah. that they deserve now to have the fans show up a bit more. And I, look, I know there's all kinds of reasons. It's funny. Um, you're at Atash, our, our um, athletic colleague and I are working on a story on the Jets' attendance. So maybe this is a little fresh in mind. And there's all kinds of reasons. I'm not blaming the fans. But I'm just saying my gift to them is a more anxious ticket buying base to reward them for their great start to the season. Okay. I I, I, I see I see where you're coming from with that. It, there's, I no, thought... there's no malice intended in that comment. No. It's a business at the end of the day, man, and they're not they're not bringing in enough revenue. Like it's gotta change. And usually when your team's winning, that should change it. And so I'm I'm optimistic. CJ Claus is heading into 2024 envisioning great things for the Jets, but I just I hope I hope it can be boosted by these 2,000 tickets per game that that CJ Claus has delivered to the market. Honorable mention uh, an accelerated timeline for uh, Kyle Connor's recovery. I like that. Well, I mean, they did provide a window of time, right? So let's let's hope it's more six weeks than eight weeks from the from the day he got injured. Okay, let's move on from Winnipeg to the Edmonton Oilers. Ooh, Edmonton. Edmonton's had quite a first part of the season, haven't they? Yes, they have. What do the Oilers need? I mean... Do you have any suggestions for me? I mean... They're winning a lot of games nowadays, right? I mean, no, they didn't they... lose... I'm mm. still... Do you know what? I'm gifting them a defenseman. You're gifting Maybe... them a defenseman, too. Sorry, you no, not a defenseman. A goaltender. A goaltender. A goaltender, yes. A board. A board. <laughs> They still need they still need a little bit more confidence in their crease. Maybe CJ Claus could just, you know, double gift, re-gift them a Jake Allen. Maybe that would solve the problem. It would it would, it would, it would it could take care of both both two of Montreal, my seven gifts to hand Montreal out. Montreal and Edmonton in the not so secret Santa. Exactly. But whether it's Jake Allen or somebody else, I am gonna gift the Oilers. A another goaltending option that gives them confidence as they go into the second half of the season, prepare for the playoffs. It's it's been a, it's been an up and down year in Edmonton. Things have been much better here of late, to, leading into the holiday break. And so, I'm, I'm going to give them a defenseman here or defenseman. Man, you have a lot of defensemen in your. I got uh, a lot of gifts to give, man. It's easy to mix them up. Yeah, jeez, a lot of defensemen. Hope you can spare me one. Anyway, well, I, your next your next stop is gonna. There's a lot of defensemen there. There are a lot of defensemen there, actually, in uh, Calgary. That is the next spot. Uh, please uh, tell us what Calgary deserves. Well, my gift to Craig Conroy and the Calgary Flames is another first round pick, because we know it's going to be a very busy trading season for the Flames, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, they, they traded Nikita Zadorov earlier in the season. But they've got many other pieces to be dealt before March 8th comes. And, uh, you know, any team that's in that that mode always loves to accrue first round picks. So I'm hoping that either by packaging one or more of those players or one of the players on their own, the market will be strong enough that he's going to get at least one pick first round pick as part of his bounty. And Calgary starts looking ahead to better days down the line. Imagine you go to Calgary and you say, here's at least one first round pick. We'll just say they get one. What if that... I guess whatever, maybe we'll say Craig Conroy. Craig Conroy looks at you and says, can I have some more? How do you <laughs> well, respond? I'm Obviously, he's going to get more in addition to the first round pick. But it's for me, it's not about number of assets. It's about the quality of assets when you're making these trades. And, and sometimes I get it. Teams do opt for volume over. But, but I think, you know, when you're trading the caliber of players that the Flames have to trade and are likely to trade here. Getting back at least one first round pick in, in those deals would be uh, would be a huge boost to the program. Okay. At least one first round pick, says CJ Claus. Now, the Vancouver Canucks. Can I can I gift them a, a number one banner to put up in the arena or is that too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Why did they retire Roberto Luongo's number? I don't know. Ring of Honor. Well, I think I do know. I mean, it was an up and down tenure with Luongo off the ice with trade, you know, 
there's a lot of complications with him and management. And I'm not saying certainly it was all on the player, but maybe, maybe there's a little bit of residue left over from some of the business dealings. I don't, but I mean, that should never be the case. Anyway, uh, I was just being tongue in cheek there. Maybe I'll, I'll give them that in addition and, and they can do with it what they want. Like they can hang it at their house or hang it in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> that might actually be my favorite gift of all the gifts you've given. Just a random number one banner. Do what you want with it. Yeah, just, <laughs> just saying, guys, you might need this. There might be a place for this. <laughs> um, the you Canucks. Like MC McLean. <laughs> I'm going to gift. I, I mean, the Canucks have... They, Credit where credit is due. What a great start to the year they've had. Super strong first third of the campaign. I'm going to gift them another top six forward, though. I think Aww. that that, you know, look, I, I guess I could gift them more salary cap space because then they could use it as they want. That's sort of like the equivalent of giving someone like a, a gift card for Christmas. It's like, hey, here you go, G- Julian. Here's your Amazon gift card. You buy what you want. So I could gift them it's more salary cap space. On it. There you go. I could gift them more salary cap space because obviously that's been a challenge, you know, for the Canucks and many other teams, but going back a couple of years now, maybe they could spend it as they want, but I'm going to go right to spending it for them and give them another top six forward. I think that that's, they're probably one top six forward shy of really being kind of a contenderish status. But I mean, this, this team is, this roster is working out and the high end players are driving the engine here. I think giving them one more, it doesn't have to be top, top option, but someone to, to ride shotgun with the, with the Millers and Pedersons and, and, you know, Besser this year with the way he's playing Quinn Hughes and the like, I think that one more big piece and that team could, could really make some noise in 2024. Okay. All right. We have given a gift to every Canadian team in the NHL. Do you have any other surprise gifts or or is that enough for this year? We got to wait back for Christmas, 2024 for more gifts from CJ Claus. I'd like to give a gift to you and producer Nick both. Oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. A, A fine bottle of scotch. Just oh, because thank you. I, thank I know you. that I know that you just might need to tip back and have a nice drink every once in a while after dealing with me twice a week all year long. So you might need to take the edge off here and there. And so I'd like to give both you and Nick a nice bottle of scotch. Okay. Well, uh, in exchange, uh, I will give you a bottle of rum, uh, Ray and Nephew, uh, so you can uh, top it off on your favorite drinks and uh, enjoy yourself uh, because I'm sure as much as you may feel the way you feel about us having to deal with you. I, you know, the feelings mutual. I'm sure I haven't been always that easy every now and again. So, and let's face it. CJ Claus does most of his shopping for the adults in his family at the liquor store. So, yeah. Tell you what, I mean, you know, it's not a bad place for some people, for some people, some people. I'm just saying, yeah, of course not. I mean, my nieces and nephews and the younger the younger members of the family, because I'm a kid at heart, I, I can get them various toys and things. But I'm not good at buying the adult gifts. So, you okay. know, well, I'm pretty predictable anyway. So you I, appreciate, get, get I, appreciate, I appreciate I appreciate I appreciate your thoughtfulness, uh, Siege. 